aircraft is uh, consists of many parts, structure parts and component, and most of the parts and component are thin, not that thick. So that's why we call the design concept of aircraft structure is thin wall structure. So it consists of skin, stringer, stiffness. Uh, so those are the members of the aircraft structure. So we don't have that very thick, heavy structure. We do have, however, for large transport aircraft, we may have that thick structure, but it's not as thick as other like civil structure or mechanical structure still considered thin. So we define aircraft structure. There are three. Uh, there is a few concept of aircraft structure construction. Uh, we may have this like we call it truss. So this truss structure is basically all tubing uh, welded together or bolted together depending on the design and mostly is uh, welded together. This uh, truss structure was designed for old aircraft, most of the old aircraft, and now not being used so much on this kind of design. It's still being used by sport aircraft or experimental aircraft. If you go to Miat, you can see this one aircraft. Uh, if you, the, the first hangar, the first bay, uh, there was uh, next to the landing gear. There is a uh, aircraft there, experimental. You can see uh, those aircraft uh, design uh, using this truss uh, concept. So those are both those, those are welded uh, stainless steel structure. So for this truss, all the structure are with these members. And if you see skin, whatever uh, other part of structure to cover this. Those just are covering or only just take up the aerodynamic load due to the A flow over the surface. Because in the theory of load mechanic, if you have any flow of uh, fluid, which is gas and liquid, over a surface, you will have a force normal to the surface. So that is a phenomena which is occurred. And then that's what happened to the aircraft as well. So uh, so for this situation, uh, we don't have those. We do have that, but we don't. The rest of the structure load are not carried by those by the skin. So the skin just covering and to ensure there is aerodynamic uh, smoothness over the aircraft. So hardly used now nowadays, and nowadays mostly we are not using this because this structure is not efficient. Uh, because all the other part of the members are not carrying the load. All the main load are only carried by these uh, truss members. And this structure also welded. And if you can go to the uh, net, you can see the aircraft that I was talking about. Uh, they have a tough time hiring a person to do a good welding on the truss members. So we need a very skillful welders to, to weld these uh, tubes together. The next structure we do call it semi monocoque, which is this is a common structure that we have at the moment for aircraft design. Uh, it doesn't matter, it also include uh, composite. So what do we have? We have members, which is uh, we do have skin, we have stringers, we have butt head, we have formers, we have uh, butt head formers. So there are many members for the structure. And this member all carry loads. They share the load equally. Only thing there are some structure may uh, may be critical for the carrying to carry the load. Those are we call it primary structure, and the rest we can call it a secondary structure. Okay, what is the difference between this and the truss? This structures everything that part of the structure carry loads. So these are the common structure design of aircraft, a modern aircraft. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's jet, transport, or large uh, passenger transport, helicopters, even the sport aircraft or exp experimental aircraft. Nowadays, we have this uh, structure design uh, construction concept.
even though we have composite structure, we still do have the same design concept. The only thing is rather than riveting, they bonded those uh, bucket, the stringers, the skin uh, together. They don't use that many fastness. However, for the major structure component, yes, yeah, they still do use rivets, high lock, lock bolt to join those piece together. So the composite structure is only basically uh, uh, depending on the material. So the material instead of metallic, they have composite. However, the concept of design remain uh, as semi monocoque for most of the structure. The third one is called monocoque. Monocoque is the structure where the skin carry most of the load and there is a simple uh, uh, additional structure member like the formers, maybe the bahid, uh, formers and bahid and skin, they don't have that stiffness, they don't have the stringers, so those are not available. Uh, not part of the structure, so the skin and those uh, few members carry the load. So this is also something which is not uh, being used uh, anymore. However, we introduced the concept for you to be able to understand there is there was this kind of design. Uh, monocoque, there was monocoque design for the construction of aircraft. And then you can see here is the uh, wing structure. The wing structure uh, in general having uh, the same uh, features, there is web, there's spar, okay, the beam in front that running across is front spar, half spar, same construction running at the back. Also we have the ribs which are giving you the shape, a for shapes, and in between to stabilize the structure we have stiffness. So those is a basic construction of wing. Uh, including uh, horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer, and also for large uh, control surfaces. So this is the basic uh, concept design for those uh, air foil uh, shape kind of structure. Any questions so far? Okay, then I move on. We also have uh, classified the structure into primary, secondary, and tertiary. I will talk more on those uh, primary and secondary. So it's very simple, uh, uh, simple definition. Primary structure, which if you if the if it fails, okay, if the primary structure fail, the whole aircraft will structure will fail means that we will have catastrophic failure. So we will have, if we have, uh, say, a wing spar broken off, so you may break the whole wing. If you have the whole bucket collapse, so you have, you will lose the whole aircraft fuselage and you will lose the aircraft. So that's primary structure. You may argue when you see the aloha, if you recall or you remember, where top half of the fuselage was uh, I mean, uh, broken off, flew off from the aircraft, aircraft still, aircraft uh, be able to flew back to the airport, to the destination. Uh, you may say, but hey, uh, your skin, those are primary structure. Yes, however, uh, there are some, there is a design features which allow that to, 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 to save that kind of structure, even though it's primary. So we cannot just generalize say when we lose all the primary structure, we immediately lose aircraft. No. However, we have catastrophic event. For example, for the case of Aloha, yes, we do lose the top part of this large aircraft flew safely back uh, safely to the airport. However, we lost one of the air stewards. So this is accident because these people died. So still the aircraft stay safe. However, there is people died because of that. So still, we can we can define that when for the major structure or for the primary structure, when the structure fail, we fail the whole aircraft structure will fail, and it will, it will be catastrophic event, and we, we it may end up we losing the aircraft. Tertiary structure, uh, secondary structure is a structure. If you 
lost the structure, we still able to fly the aircraft back to this uh, to continue flying or back to the back to the base or back to the airport or you can do a turn back so there is a kind of structure for example if we have like doors inspection panels uh, those are not uh, primary does not carry primary structure load so those we can call it a secondary structure it was a few years ago when the C uh, ASIA has put in uh, high speed tape over a uh, cut up, not over a window, over inspection door, small inspection door. And it was uh, someone uh, took the photo and put it in the Facebook and they went viral. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because those are secondary structure. We don't have that structure in place. We still can fly the aircraft back. So it's not an issue because it will not cause catastrophic failure of the aircraft. However, we need to fix the problem because those are still uh, detrimental to the aircraft uh, structure and system. Any question? A stationary structure is hardly being used now. We will focus more on primary and secondary structure. If you look, if later on you work on the aircraft, you go to the aircraft, like aircraft maintenance manual, aircraft structure manual, uh, we always refer to this uh, primary and secondary structure. Any question? Okay, design philosophy. In aircraft design, there are three design philosophy, safe life, fail safe, and damage tolerant. So this is something also you need to understand because if you, you read the manual later on, when you go refer to aircraft manual, and you may see these words over and over because they that is how the aircraft being designed. So let's uh, let's uh, discuss about safe life. Safe life is safe life when the structure having life. So each part and component of the structure has been given life. 9,000 hours, 12,000 hours, 15,000 hours, 20,000 hours. There's a list of these parts and component and life in the aircraft manuals, structure aircraft maintenance manual. So, which will be used by the maintenance maintenance uh, MRO uh, to replace the part once the life has achieved. So that is safe life. So safe life structure with the life attached to it. So if we call safe life structure and you don't see life attached to it, then it's not a safe life uh, design concept. For example, when I was working on C130. It's all aircraft and this C130 having life for every parts and component, especially on the wing. So once the wing life has been has uh, reached completed, then we bring the aircraft back to depot, which which is which was a rod. Then we remove the center wing and we replace the whole wing wing, center wing and the outer wing. And then the aircraft will have a new wing and then we zero the wing life, so the aircraft can stay flying. Even though the structure uh, life, uh, the first last may not be zero, but the wing life is zero. So it will be because most of the load will be on the wing and we are really depending on the wing to fly, uh, to, to be intact, to make, to fly the aircraft safely. So we just replace the wing. So that is how we do we call real life or the wing or uh, wing and structure real life or life extension program. So those are many names attached to it. So means that every part and component will have life and we remove the parts and component once once the life is reached or the worst we may retire the whole aircraft when the life is reached is reached. Those those are the safe life design principle. So this safe life safe life design principle is not economical because we may end up uh, throwing away parts and component even though the life uh, even though it's still good. Because uh, the damage on the structure not just necessary on how long they are being operated, and also what are the operating environment. Just for ourselves, for us, if you are very stressful, your work is very stressful. Uh, our age may be lesser than people who are uh, not being exposed to the stress. So you can see in Tibet and those area where even the water. Uh, 60, 70 easily climb up the mountain because the life is not stressful. So they have good life, then they live longer. 
So that kind of analogy also happening to the structure. If you expose the structure to very extreme condition, you maneuver very uh, steep maneuver. The, the aircraft go to war, then you have a uh, higher you you can incur more damage, even though the life is shorter, but the damage is more. So that is the 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 problem. So if you are not flying the aircraft, uh, of, oftenly fly the aircraft, then the life still rich when uh, it comes to the retirement life, as what the design the aircraft OEM has specified, then you have to remove the aircraft or you have to replace the part. So that's expensive. Now they have a new design concept. They call it. Uh, sorry, before that, uh, why we talk about life? Because every parts, every material, every materials, they will have this kind of phenomena where, as we apply the stress, the stress go high, the life is shorter. If you apply the stress very low, then the structure can live forever. So. If you want to do that, the structure can be very heavy, very thick because to reduce the structure stress, like we have learned in the chapter one earlier, force over area is a stress. If you want to get lower stress, the area is very big, the structure is very heavy, then you can live forever. However, the aircraft may not be economical to carry any payload because it is heavy aircraft. So aircraft is counted how they generate revenue is by how much payload they can carry because they will be uh, kil, uh, dollar per kilogram. That's how we make money on the aircraft. Okay, these are common to all structure. Doesn't matter even the bio material, our skin, our hair. They also have uh, have done the analysis, have done the study, has done the test, and they will generate this stress to uh, cycle curve. So the higher you go with the stress, the lower your life. So this is uh, this is example for. With, uh, steel and aluminium. Uh, you can see even uh, steel uh, is is more uh, is more uh, friendly to stresses compared to aluminium. However, as like we, we know, steel is heavier. So that's why we only use steel for very critical uh, such a part and component, not everywhere because of the weight and the cost. And also the steel are uh, easily corroded. They are react to the environmental condition easily compared to aluminium. Okay, so how do we determine the life? So for large OEM, even for small OEM, we do. They do have fatigue test. What they did, they apply the load on the structure, uh, and then the the load will be uh, representing the flight of the aircraft in service and. Uh, they do the uh, cyclic load test uh, as long as to to simulate the expected life of the aircraft, and then any and then they keep uh, inspect every part and component of the aircraft and just to see which has failed and where they are failing. So those will be recorded as part of the aircraft maintenance program in future, and part of the uh, life uh, aging aircraft program or what they can do the record the life and then they were able to determine what to replace and when. Okay, and then this is a rod. I was looking for a rod for quite a while. That's what we did. We replaced the center wing, we replaced the outer wing, and this aircraft will have a new set of wing. So we relife the aircraft. The life is become zero when you put in the wing. Okay, again like I say it's not efficient to save life, so we go to fail safe. Fair safe structure concept is very simple. You design multiple redundant structure for you to be able to arrest the problem, arrest the failure. For example, in this case, we have two bar head, and you can see why across so many bar head, so many stringers, so many stiffness. What they did, they tried to contain the failure within that bar head, within the stiffness, within the frame. So the aircraft can go back safely, land it safely, and go back to go to the next destination safely. And there is time for us to look at the damage. We are able to see the damage, and then we repair it so we can just bring back the aircraft into the service. So the damage tolerance concept, uh, sorry, the fail safe design concept is a structure as we design. When there is a failure, there is a mean to uh, not to accelerate. 
to decelerate the failure so we will be able to inspect the damage and we will be able to repair so there are a lot of redundancy in design where if we see the skin and frame is damaged so the structure is still intact because all the load we transferred to the rest of the members so there will be a lot of uh, redundancy in this kind of structure so this is the fail safe fail safe safe life fail safe any question on that for damage tolerant is a very uh, it's not new has be has only been introduced in 1960s when the united states air force found out that uh, fail safe save life it doesn't really uh, it's not efficient they are struggling for the safe life struggling to replace parts and component of the structure even though the aircraft not been uh, operating often uh, then they for the fail safe for the fail safe they are seeing uh, some of the some of the damage are not able to be detected so the aircraft fly with the damage and the aircraft fail so uh, that concept is also doesn't really is work but doesn't it's not efficient so what they did they have a new concept of design this concept is saying that every part is already damaged so every part and component of the structure they consider that it's already damaged by 0 0.005 of an inch and then using the fracture mechanics theory they grow this damage so the damage there is a damage obviously the damage will grow will grow under the load in service and then they determine what will be the critical damage uh, length and then they set that critical damage length as the inspection so detectable crack length that is will be the inspection interval so as they do the inspection and then when they see the damage they will repair so they will repair and then the aircraft back to back in service and then they uh, the aircraft back in service and they keep look, uh, monitoring the the damage for every area is uh, for a critical area uh, because they know when the crack will be become critical because when you do the fracture mechanic analysis we know we are able to determine how long the uh, the part uh, will grow to what length from that 0 0.05 or an inch uh, crack so by having that knowledge by having the information we use the information to inspect the aircraft so that's why you can see some structure being inspected 200 hours 100 hours 600 hours and those are the information from the analysis of damage tolerance so we are able to predict uh, when the damage will grow into the critical so first we set inspection for the parts and component based on that information so at least we have we are able to predict or to see failure we're not missing the failure like the safe life or fail safe because there's no monitor, not monitor, monitoring the parts crack growth but here for this damage tolerant they will monitor the crack growth of the part so that is uh, the latest uh, design philosophy on the aircraft so all the aircraft structure design philosophy will be using this concept of damage tolerance especially for the uh, major structure component like wing wing fittings uh, landing gear fittings spars everything that is critical for the structure so we are able to predict when it will fail and we do the inspection before it fails so or we do the inspection to see when it fails and we can remove and replace however uh, fail safe sorry safe life are still usable for single point failure structure for example if you are working on landing gear so you cannot have redundancy on landing gear so uh, fail safe structure design concept is not applied we have nose gear strut i don't think you want to have two nose gear strut 
which can be very heavy. So a single point failure, we fail the strut, the aircraft will fail. So we cannot apply the uh, fail safe structure design concept. We also cannot uh, be gambling and uh, they do the damage tolerance, they do fracture mechanics, but we also cannot really rely on that damage tolerance for the running gear because we have no room to, we have no room for an error. So for this component, if we still use the uh, safe life where we determine how long the part uh, supposed to live under the material, then we remove, replace, retire the part and component. So we still, even though with this three design concept, but some structure are still need to go back to the uh, safe life design concept because of the nature of the uh, design of the parts and the loads into the part. Okay, awareness compliance. So how do we do that? We have to uh, go to each, if or the, each of the requirement here and we do a compliant table. So this is just example. We see here requirement, declaration of compliance, reference report and status. So here I just pick two. Uh, for example, 25303, factor safety. Unless otherwise specified, factor safety must be applied to the prescribed limit load, which is considered external load on the structure. When loading condition is prescribed in terms of ultimate load, the factor safety need not be applied unless otherwise specified. So those are the requirement, one requirement 25303. There are over 2,000 lines you need to go through. Uh, however, you already uh, skip a few because you interest more on B, C, uh, B, C, D and G, then we have skipped almost half. However, you need to go through all the requirement and this is one of it. And then you have to declare what is your declaration, radio safety, you say, okay, they comply and then comply. If complied, if not complied, so you have to declare comply, and then you have to refer to the report number. That report number will be the report of the stress analysis, load analysis. So what we do in the assignment is we are developing this report, and the report number will be appear under this box here. And then uh, what are the status? Completed, not completed, in progress, or under review. So this uh, compliant table, which will be submitted to the authority for the approval. Like I say again, I'm, I'm guiding you to the real work, which you, this is what we do at work. So if you get, if you got question, please ask because this is real and you miss this a lot and uh, people pay thousands of dollars for these courses, just for this course. When they graduated, they come back and do this course and they pay a lot for this. So yours are already part of the program. If you're not able to ask question and really understand this it is a waste because people really need to pay a lot of money for this course okay so that's awareness compliant we will do that also part of the assignment we need to have to do that and also you look at this a second requirement here accessibility provision so means must be provided to allow inspection okay it means that when you do repair you install doubler you have to consider still a provision for inspection it cannot close any doors, any inspection doors, uh, any uh, any 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 opening for you to inspect the aircraft. So you cannot do that. So you have to maintain, you have to show the requirement, this requirement accessibility provision. So while having the repair by installing the doubler, big doubler maybe, and then you still have to consider the accessibility provision for the inspection of the critical structure. It cannot close them. So that is 25.611. There are many of these, and that's why you have to do compliant table. In compliant table, basically prepared by the compliant verification engineer, and submit through the design organization approval. So design organization approval is one of the approval for approved to do the design and the repair. Uh, then CVE is one of the engineer. One is, a, is also, this engineer is approved in three by the DCA. So if you're not uh, competent enough, you're not able to achieve the competency required, uh, you're not going to be, you're not going to be approved as CVE. If you do have competency, the company will send you for the interview with the CA and CA will interview you. You pass all the interview and then you get the CVE and then you got, you got a lot of money for it. 
So that's for sure. And this, of course, prepare you for that. Okay, then, uh, and this is not just Malaysia. This concept here, what, which what I'm throwing to you is also around the world. You go to Europe, you go to the US, you go any place in the world. This is the way we, we do things. Then you go into what is design organization. So every repair, everything that you do on the aircraft must be approved by the Civil Aviation Authority of the state. Either Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Brunei, anywhere. And for this uh, design, it must be done by approved design organization. And this is a simple structure of what design organization should be. They should have CEOs should have head of design, should have design project, should have evidence office, independent monitoring. So CO, head of design, evidence office, and independent monitoring, RCA approved post, they collect post orders. You will be interviewed, you will buy the uh, CM for you before you be approved to have this post. So the interview, just like everything else, so I also giving you whatever I have given you here will be part of it. So please don't lose this, uh, please follow. And then once you have this approval, you're allowed to design and also apply for approval of the repair design. If you are doing major design, you need still need to go to CA for the approval. But if you're doing minor design for very simple repair, then you can approve the repair yourself under this approval. Questions? Am I going too fast? Do you guys understand? Understand. Okay, hmm. good. So you can be hired by the airlines when you graduate. Okay. Then uh, there are when you do the repair, they, you you do you just don't you just don't do it as you like to do. This repair process that you're going to do must be approved by the authority. So there are two uh, law that, that will govern this uh, repair, which is CAD 8106, Design of Repair. And then also there's another law, uh, CAD uh, 8110, Installation of the Repair. So you're not just simply design, repair, install. No, cannot. You have to design the repair. You have to do this analysis. You have to come up with the report and then you have to go to authority for the approval of the repair. Okay, so this is the law. And this law is also heavy on you. If you don't comply, you can go to five years jail or 500,000 ringgit fine or both. So that's why you have to bear with me on what to be done. Otherwise, you may be the victim one of the person be fined or be in jail because you're not doing the work according to the regulations. Okay, 8106 requirement for repair approval. Okay, how to be approved? Let's we go through it. Repair shall only be approved when it is demonstrated following the certification program that the repair design complies with the type certification basis incorporated by the reference in as applicable. So mean that for this, you must show the repair has been done according to the uh, approved uh, certification basis. So that's why those all this will be part of the assignment that we will do together. So you by having this, uh, work, by working this together, you should be able to understand what is A mean. And then by B, when the compliance with the type set basis and the applicable this of this data has been declared and justified comply. So this is the report. You have to provide the report. Remember that I show you the compliance requirement. You have to do the engineering report to show, for example, uh, your fatal safety is, is 1.5. And then the report must be available for each of the design of the requirement. So this is a B. Then C, you see there is no future or characteristic that has been identified that may make product unsafe. So I mean there is a general observation, there's no unsafe design. For example, you cut 
the the cut out when you remove the crack you cut the cut out the, the corners is very sharp and there's no mention anywhere however we have just learned about stress concentration earlier we know that sharp corners will give rise to the stress stress concentration so it's not acceptable so that could be uh, one of the unsafe features that you have in your repair you have cut with very uh, with very uh, sharp corners no radius so that can be one of it so d where the applicant has specified that is that provided station data on the basis arrangement with the type services holder so for the major repair you may have to have some communication and uh, you have been in communicating with the oem about that problem and about the design of the repair that's why uh, after in the assignment also will be a stage where you need to write reports to the oem to explain about the defect and also to propose the repair so that's a requirement of d mean that you have been in consulting in consultation with the oem in design and the repair so that is on the approval of the repair then on the embodiment of the repair. So embodiment of repair, installation repair is basic, is most of it is the responsibility of the MRO 145. May not be part of you, however, you need to understand there is a, uh, AD, there is a regulation on installation and repair, which is uh, CAD 8110, installation and repair. So what you need to do, there's three elements here, repair compliant, production or fabrication of repair, and then we have repair embodiment, so three elements. So for the repair compliant, uh, we go back to this uh, 8106 that we have discussed earlier. So this in this uh, embodiment, of the, of embody, embodiment of repair, we're not concerned about the repair approval already, we should have the repair approval, or else we're not gonna go into this. However, I give you some general guideline what to be done, all repair must comply with the evidence requirement acceptable to the state or registry. If we talk about Malaysia, it's Malaysia. If Asia, for example, Asia is registered in Malaysia, so it's Malaysia. The CAMO, the Continuing Areas Management Organization, or ECA, show overall responsibility to ensure the repair completed. So, once you have the design data approved, you go to CAMO. CAMO will make sure the repair is embodied. It's not you. It's not the MARO. So, CAMO. If you, you know about CAMO, I should know about, about CAMO by now because I think you have gone, uh, you have taken the a low class. Okay. And all design or repair to be embodied on Malaysian aircraft shall be approved under the requirement of 8106, uh, which is approval or repair, comply with the requirement of electrical product manufacture repair uh, design. So electrical product manufacture repair design will be under the DOA. So that is the UA area. So it means that for you to embody the repair, you should have data approved by the UA through the UA before we start to embody the repair. So this is why I think this is not really applicable to you, but you need to know about it because there is a uh, accomplishment or the, uh, the, uh, the implementation of the repair. Production fabrication of the repair. So you are uh, this repair parts and component is allowed to be manufactured either by production organization or by the MRO 1.5 which having the privilege or uh, with the with you with the designer in the uh, design in the in the MRO so there's three option there that is why you also be part of it you may also fabricate the parts or the repair in collaboration with the 1.5 you're not the OA you are the OA because you are doing the repair and focus, focusing on you as the OA to do the repair design, to approve the data, and also working with some entity to produce uh, parts and component, doublers, uh, fillers, and all those required parts for the repair. So that is one of your responsibility. If that is happen to be under you, then you have to have a, a procedure, a process how to manage those activity, manufacturing of repair parts. And then embodiment of repair. So embodiment of the repair is no one can do it except the 1445 MRO. Okay, let's continue. Uh, okay, what is next is the 
application for the certification of the repair. Okay, what we need to do is when you are doing the repair, you know that you cannot uh, you cannot touch the aircraft because anything that you do on the aircraft will be change the aircraft. And then you're not allowed to change the structure. You're not allowed to change the design aircraft. So that's why uh, you need to get authority uh, to give you the approval to change. Repair is a change because uh, it was not, for example, if you are installing a doubler, the doubler was not there before. Now you installing a doubler, so that installation is a change. Before you do the change, you need to determine the design. What are the design basis of the change? So you can see this chart here is the process of you to do the design change, which is repair is part of design change. And this process is being done in the design organization of uh, a design organization company, uh, which you uh, will be working for this company in future. If you're doing, if you are in technical services, doing a car repair, you will be part of the team here. And then that is the process. First, what you need to do is you need to determine what will be the certification basis. What is the certification requirement and how you want to show compliance to that certification requirement. Once approved, if you are doing major repair, you have to discuss this with the authority. But if you're doing minor repair, the DOA itself having the privilege to, to approve this. So then after that has been approved, has been agreed that you design to what certification requirement, then you start doing the detailed design, you start doing the analysis, and then you start doing the detailed report showing your compliance, and then the verification engineer will do the verification, and then you declare the document, uh, the, the design or repair is complied to all the requirement according to the evidence uh, requirement of the aircraft, as well as you have been doing all the paper according to the company's uh, SOP. So you declare that, and then you get the, you either for you if minor repair, and the repair within the scope of the DOA, you will approve the repair. If not, then you have to go to CA for the approval. So this is a process. I will not go to detail on this. I will not go into quiz on this. Uh, however, this is general knowledge because in future you will be working in this environment. OK, so this is a process within the design organizations. And then that is your position later on. You can be the show compliance engineer. You can be the verification compliance engineer. You also can be the head of design organizations. So those are the position that you may be working on in the future in the design organization company. Questions? And those repair to be approved by the authority, like I say again, uh, uh, that uh, authority which are uh, responsible. Every uh, most of the country in the world, basically, or we can say all are the member state of the AKO. And this member state, one of the requirement for the member state for the AKO, they have to have National Aviation Authority. They call it NAA. NAA is a term we use, National Aviation Authority. And every state will have that. In Malaysia, we have CM. In Singapore, we have CES, Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore. In China, we have CAC China. In Indonesia, we have DGCA Indonesia, Director General of Civil Aviation Indonesia. We have Prefin, we have Thailand. So every country will have it. So these are the authority. If the aircraft registered and operated in that country, if you are registered in Malaysia, operated in Malaysia, you are responsible for the aircraft and all the repair approval must be approved by CM. But if your airline, you are working, say for example, you are lucky and you will be working in Singapore. So you're working for SIA. So you are the engineer with SIA, you're doing all this process. And then because uh, SIA is registered by, it's uh, registered to the CA Singapore, Civil Aviation Authority Singapore, operate in Singapore. And then all this repair approval should be from the CA Singapore. So the repair approval should be, uh, done by the company where the aircraft is being operated and registered and operated. Okay, 